Massachusetts Commission for LGBTQ Youth is a movement uh, on behalf of our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or gender expansive youth across the entire state. It gives people their lives back. It gives people the ability to advocate for themselves, and it grows them as people. We need policies that support queer and trans youth instead of targeting us. People often underestimate young people, but year after year we fought for the rights of all people. Regardless of what you are, we are all world changers. Be yourself. And if you don't know where to start, find me. Find GSA. What brings me joy is passing policy. And we're able to do that a lot with the commission. I think every state should have a commission that looks to protect and serve and make the spaces and the states safe for all of our youth. The commission is an independent state agency comprised of 50 volunteer members we are LGBTQ youth ourselves, teachers, nurses, lawyers, doctors, people from all walks of life, providing annual policy recommendations to both the legislature and the governor's office. And we do this in partnership with 18 state agencies, most importantly, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education with the Safe Schools Program. What we do is we provide a lot of training and technical assistance to teachers and leaders and uh, community agencies uh, across the entire Commonwealth so that our youth will thrive. Well, good day, beloved. How y'all doing? May you find liberation and inspiration in our celebration of 30 years of service, rainbows, glitter, love, and grit. Thank you. Today, we honor the youth of the Commonwealth with our swearing in of our state's finest and most committed champions and advocates. Today also marks the release of our annual recommendations. These recommendations represent some of the best research-based and ground-pounded thinking we can gift, gift the Commonwealth. Woman to lead mass, the Mass Commission on LGBTQ. You will free everyone if you free the most marginalized person in the room. And I believe that myself and the team that we have now, um, we're going to do that. As a Latinx person, I am one of the people who was brought in to diversify. Uh, the commission a bit more and I'm okay with that and I'm honored to be a part of that. So today the LGBTQ Youth Commission looks very different than it did when I started. It has a lot more representation of young people, people of color, trans folks, but that said we know we still have a long way to go. Okay, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. At this time, uh, the Lieutenant Governor and I would like to jointly conduct the swearing in of the members of the Commission. If each of you would please raise your right hand and repeat after me, I, 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 I do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance. Oh my God, I totally remember this. I'm sitting here going, where am I? I see Jesse Byers, oh my God. I just want to say that I think that this commission being statewide is really important because I hope that it'll help more high schools start up groups like Project 10 East at my school, which... Wow, my parents were there to see me sworn in <laughs> 30 years ago. We are saying that we are going to make advocating for gay and lesbian youth a very top priority. They're not going to be put behind the gay rights bill. They're not going to be shunted aside because the right wing uh, is going to make accusations about recruiting children. We are going to put their needs first. 
The commission was created by executive order in, in February of 92, and then we were all sworn in by Governor Weld, and we had our first meeting in the summer of 1992. So I was a founding member of the commission. You know, I think there's a lot of moments to be proud of. Um, I, I definitely go back to that first year in 1992 when we held the groundbreaking hearings at, at the State House. Many high schools across this state are known to be not safe for gay and lesbian teenagers. Students have nothing to protect them from being discriminated against or harassed constantly by their peers and even their teachers. It was this testimony by homosexual kids that forced Massachusetts to acknowledge a population that could number in the thousands. I feel if there's only one student uh, who is being harassed, uh, who is being discriminated against, uh, who say, faces a violent situation, that that student needs protection. The Massachusetts Board of Education has adopted the nation's first statewide policy recommending schools set up support groups and counseling for gay students and their families, train teachers in suicide prevention, and above all, protect gays and lesbians from violence. It's very inspiring to work with people who have led the movement and um, learn from and work alongside as colleagues. I mean, amazing that I sort of grew up <laughs> with you in the commission, coming back as a professional I mean, I was um, wearing a different hat because I was a, a youth? kid, a youth, and How old were you? I was 15. So one of the things that happened was that I was at my high school advocating for change. We got funding from the commission. My high school principal wouldn't sign the check. And it was very important to have the people at the commission had my back, other adults, educators, and youth that were doing similar things in their schools. Mm -hmm. I think that's the power of the commission even then, mm -hmm. was just, it didn't feel like you were doing it alone, even though in the moment, it could be kind mm -hmm. of scary and feel like you were doing it alone, and that maybe you were very visible and potentially under attack. There was a real um, concern and resistance, uh, certainly around transgender issues and transgender people, and so, uh, when, when I applied to the commission, uh, uh, based on my long experience even then with Bagley and working with queer youth, one, one would have thought that that would have been a fairly straightforward process, but, but it wasn't. And it was interesting when you think over 30 years how different letters got, it add, got added to the name of the program, LG. I mean, it was lesbian and gay at first, gay and lesbian at first, and then, you know, bisexual was a little bit of a challenge because sex is part of bisexual, so that was uh, navigating that next step. And then transgender, and then it was actually John Bino, who was an associate commissioner at the department, came to us and said, I hear that a lot of students are identifying as queer to mean an umbrella term for not heterosexual or not straight. Don't you think we should have that in the, the name of the program? So we're delighted to be presenting the next set of awards to an inspiring group of educators and GSA advisors. Dr. Declan O'Connor is the principal of Springfield's Chestnut Middle School, where Dr. O'Connor came out as transgender in 2019. Congratulations and thank you for your service. In that early years, we'd have these regional workshops for student leaders and their advisors, and it was a little lopsided at the beginning that we had a lot of advisors and not a lot of students. That changed over the years, but I remember this regional workshop out in Western Mass where uh, we were at a school and this bus pulls up and all these students come up, come out, and I was like, and then an adult, uh, a woman came out with them, and I said, uh, I went up to her and said, how did you get all these students to come here. I was excited. We had all these students from, from this school that had come from a remote rural area. And she said, I'm the school nurse. These students have been coming to me for years. It's about time you did something for them. I was like, oh, really? That's who they've been going to. This is News for New England. Thousands of gay, lesbian, and straight students took to the streets of Boston today. They're hoping the fifth annual Gay Straight Youth Pride March will make a difference. How 3,000 people walked to end discrimination against homosexuals in schools. More than 185 high schools in the state have gay straight alliances with more planned. Today's march is sponsored by Governor Salucci's Commission on Gay and Lesbian Youth. Walking down the halls, people shouting, shut up, dyke. 
things like that. Yes, it, get, it gets pretty bad. I've had friends that have had um, black eyes from it. There's been some really strong discrimination, and you, you hear it no matter where you go. That type of harassment only adds to the normal growing pains teenagers deal with, putting many gay and lesbian students at risk. A survey from the Massachusetts Department of Education found 32% of gay and lesbian students were threatened or injured in school, and 46%, nearly half, had attempted suicide. It's really rough, you know, to, to talk about suicide, and maybe the goal shouldn't be to talk about suicide and to say, we want to make you feel really good about yourself so that you don't go out and kill yourself someday. You know, your life the, is so horrible. Yeah, <laughs> right. The goal here should be to instill some sense of self-worth in these people, not to keep them from killing themselves, but because they deserve it as human beings. I joined my high school GSA during my freshman year. I was struggling. I didn't have a lot of friends. I had anxiety, depression, ADHD, a lot of gender dysphoria, and I didn't really feel like I had a community or a place to go. I'm sorry, did I just see some homosexuality over here? Uh, never. No, never. Okay, good. Okay, good, 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 good. There were a lot of things that I didn't know. I did not know about consent before this. I did not know about safe sex. I did not know about LGBTQ plus history. I didn't even know about my history or who I was. And having access to this resource was life-saving for me. If I did not have access to that GSA State Leadership Council and the commission, I don't know where I would be. Once I went to that meeting and I saw all of those smiling faces, the warm welcomes, people giving hugs to each other, I immediately knew I was home and that I wanted to be an activist. Student leadership has been at the core of this work. What they do is not only help to share best practices and strategies for having gender and sexuality alliances thrive in their schools, it's also about influencing policy at the statewide level and in their local districts. There were students in the southeast region who one of the first initiatives they led were pronoun campaigns throughout their schools and got the staff and faculty together and presented the importance of pronouns um, specific to their school policies. Parents were supposed to prepare our child for the world. I have found like a little twist on that, that I feel like it's really my job to prepare the world for my child. And the commission really helps to make that job much easier for parents like me. Reese, oh my Hi. gosh. Hi. <laughs> what people forget is the vast majority of people that we work with in schools mm -hmm. are parents. Yeah. Our parents, so when they hear you speak, they are, they're listening to it both as a school person and primarily as a, as a parent. They're like, how would I react if this were happening in my family? I want to be Reese. Families like mine only thrive and survive because of people like you, so. Well, you're my superhero. Oh. Our staff said, Craig, like, this is a need. And you, like, and I'm like, great on it. So reached out to the Safe Schools program um, and said, you know, uh, and I was an early commission member, so I was like, oh, I know the people. We got Avengers. Call, let's call the uh, commission. So calling the Safe Schools program was, uh, was such a gift because what we received was Elijah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would say doing the work I do fully as myself, it's... It, it can go two ways because there is sometimes the me that feels resentful that I have to come into a space and prove my humanity to mm -hmm. other people. Like, yes. like here is my story. Um, feel the pain that I felt in my life and in my journey to become who I am today and become the happy, healthy adult that I am today. And then I have to share that misery with other people for them to feel that empathy. Yeah. But I realize that's what that's what this work is, right? And so the other piece of me is joyful that there are people who are actually willing to listen to me, yeah. right? They're willing to listen to my experience and they get something out of it and focus on the change that I'm making and that there is real tangible change. Everyone saw themselves in Elijah when Elijah was telling the story and that was phenomenal. And we got a bonus gift of getting Elijah to do another session this year. Ah, oh, amazing. <laughs>
policy is what we use to as a guidepost on how to carry out our work every day um, and do it in an equitable way. Um, this is the LGBTQ guide that was developed by the DCF liaisons as well um, in com uh, conjunction with the commission and other community partners. Um, so there's a lot of information, glossary of terms, there is a um, prompts if a kid comes out to you, what you need to say, what how to help you with that and then it's also developed for our social workers there's a section for social workers there's a section for families of origin there's a section for our youth there's a section for foster and pre-adoptive parents so DCF right now has a gender affirming medication policy um, that is inclusive obviously of trans people um, and that's incredibly important as they go often without gender affirming medication um, and medical care. Um, they have also begun to work on their non-discrimination policy um, and we're looking to change their MAP training, their training for foster parents. Um, my name is Kim Topping and I'm grateful for the opportunity to testify in support of S310 and H618, an act relative to LGBTQ inclusive curriculum. A number of us testified for a curriculum bill that would mandate that all schools in Massachusetts teach LGBTQ inclusive curriculum. Um, I've been an educator for over 10 years now and I'm often returning to a quote that was shared with me by a mentor early on, which is you can't be what you can't see. Each I think writing is beautiful and a great way to communicate, but when issues are so like abundantly important and in need of attention and when they're not getting that attention or when you need to kick start it i think a rally is a good way to do it i love sex ed i love sex ed and i vote and i vote i love sex ed and i vote i love sex ed and i vote the star of the show is the healthy youth act itself this is a bill that will ensure that all sex education taught here in the commonwealth is based in fact and science teaches things like consent is affirming to all of our lgbtq students <laughs> we're going to hear from sawyer keegan who is a neuro neurodivergent mentally ill disabled transgender young survivor of sexual violence and an active volunteer in the massachusetts statewide gsa council an incredible advocate please welcome sawyer encourage everyone to join today in making this effort to make sex ed a helpful, meaningful, age-appropriate, consent-driven, evidence-based, and medically accurate because 11 years is too long. <laughs> As an adult, sometimes I think I as an adult who thinks they're cool and hip, I should say, um, sometimes I fall into the space of thinking that I got it, that I'm, you know, I'm, I get it, I, I understand it, and then a, a youth will be at a meeting, in any meeting, and they remind me that um, support looks different for each youth that I'm working with. There is no other state agency across the United States that is designed just for LGBTQ youth except Massachusetts. How phenomenal. So we have the opportunity to be the model that other states, I, I'm still not understanding why other states have not figured it out. Like, come on, but like, if we can do it, you can too. Change doesn't just happen because you ask nicely for it. Um, it happens when you you keep on the pressure, you get the data that you need, um, and you're willing to put in the work. The youth will no longer be silenced, um, that the youth, that youth will have a voice, um, and that it will come from them, and I love that. Find the person who cares. It may not be the person you think it should be, or where you're looking, but there's always someone who cares. Find that person, and they will help to move things along. So happy anniversary to our entire commission family. It is amazing to be here 30 years later. We're absolutely stronger and better together. Happy 30th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy, happy 30th, 30th anniversary, anniversary to the commission. commission. Let's do that again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Happy anniversary commission. Happy anniversary. Happy 30th. Happy 30th anniversary to the commission. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Happy 30th. 
happy 30th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy 30th. Happy, happy 30th, 30th anniversary, anniversary to, to the commission. commission. I'm looking forward to the next 30 years.